hello hi hello nearless welcome back in it's been a bit bet bit <laughs> it's been a bit how are you uh we missed you on the last few streams but i'm so glad that you can catch this one um it must be really really early for you right now yeah how's everyone doing um it's well it's been a bit in general i miss the october stream um so sorry about that uh <laughs> october just came and went actually september came went and went and i was like trying to schedule the october stream and there was just so much going on what was going on on there was like the Monday, the first Monday. I'm mean, for this semester. I think Mondays are the best. Um, it's been a little bit hard trying to figure out when to have these streams because, um, uh, because of my class schedule. And then now that I've like, I feel like I've like figured out a time. Um, until I think January. Then we'll see about my class schedule and spring semester so then i might have to change the times all over again so yeah it's it's quite up in the air um let's see what was happening october the first week of october yeah you know oh yeah i think i had to work on a project yeah man it's been rough <laughs> <laughs> oh my god hello engineer change it's good to see you thank you thank you thank you it's good to be back um i really really want to have this more often but oh my god i am dying uh oh hello near this says i'm good working on some maps for the 30 day map challenge with the observable ambassadors oh my god that's so exciting uh do you have anything you can link us to um, no, I'm not doing the 30 day map challenge, dude. Dudes and dudettes. Like, it is hard to hold on <laughs> with just schoolwork. Actually, it's hard to hold on with just schoolwork and trying to get a good amount of sleep so that I don't get sick. <laughs> like, that is, that is literally all of my energy <laughs> is going towards not getting sick. <laughs> Uh, it is such an interesting change from like going from not seeing anyone for a whole year to like constantly being around classmates. Um, we're always like we're all vaccinated. We're always always mask on uh, on the floor in the classrooms. But man, still I am so paranoid about getting. <laughs> <laughs> getting sick maddie two shoes welcome back in so sorry i missed you last time around uh but it's so good to see you this time around i think uh did we forget to raid i think we did raid you yeah 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 yeah. we did raid you uh so happy we got to raid you after that one um <laughs> uh hold on that is only a phrase a dead college student can say is that so engineer change i don't that's not an association I have. El Jukes, welcome back in. Or is it your first time? I can't remember anymore. Um, but either way, welcome in. Um, I'm so glad, Maddie Two Shoes. How has everything been for you? How are your streams going? Um, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, you are right. Just trying to hold on is definitely a like a barely functioning college student would say. Uh, <laughs> Engineer change says takes me back to my grad studies for sure. Maddie Two Shoes says I'm also trying to hold on. Currently taking two weeks off Twitch streaming to start sort stuff out. Oh, that sounds like oh well. I hope I hope it is. Um, a good break. I hope. Uh, I hope there's not anything um, bad going on or anything. Uh, but if it's a voluntary, like just trying to take some time off Twitch, that sounds really good. Um, ooh, hello, near this has sent a link. Oh wait, do I need to sign in? Okay, so it says page not found. 
Let me try and sign it. Oh, okay. So I think this works for me because I'm, I'm an observable ambassador. Whoa, this is cool. Okay, Brett, um, does the fact that it's not shared... So it seems like I need to be an observable ambassador to be able to see this. Does that mean that you would prefer I don't share it on screen? Oh, this is cool. I think I might uh, share screen for the first time in a while. Um, let's see. It says... Ooh. How long you're this oh oh cool are you both uh, observable ambassadors that is so cool oh okay okay i will share a screen in a bit um let me see Oh, so there's a 30 day challenge. Oh man, I'm seeing myself on screen. I look so tired. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Engineer Change says, I love an opportunity to fail at shape files. And this is that opportunity. Oh, that's great to hear, Maddie Two Shoes. Burnout prevention. That is great. Um, oh my gosh. Congratulations on your new job. Is it your new job? Start up full time in January. Oh my God. Creating an online course as well as being a guest speaker at uni. That is a lot. And then streaming on top of that. Yeah. And then normal life. Yes. That is quite a lot. I'm so happy to hear you're taking a break. Um, Engineer Change says, I'm a ggplot and art kind of person though. I can't do fancy D3 stuff like you. I am 100% sure that is not true. Um, no, I'm ready to shoes. Uh, I totally understand uh, the tried D3 ones. Um, I hope you give it another try. I think if you like Chart.js, I think you might really, really enjoy Observable Plot. Um, I think Observable Plot is quite intuitive. Um, much more intuitive, I would say, than D3, but also gives you a lot of the power that D3 gives. So you might enjoy that. Um, yeah, well, actually, let's, uh, let's switch over to the... Um, Let's switch over to our screen view. Majestic Mac, hello, welcome back in. Hey everyone, it's so good to see all of you back in the chats. Uh, I was really sad that I missed last month uh, and I've been looking forward to this catch up. Um, ooh. Let me see if I can just pop out. Uh, ooh, okay, I can pop out just the chat, yes, okay. Can you tell it's been a while since I've streamed? Oh my god, I'm so glad I checked in on my OBS and Twitch like 15 minutes before this because uh, I just upgraded to uh, Monterey, like Mac OS Monterey, 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 Mon Mon Monterey, okay, Monterey, Monterey, <laughs> Monterey, okay, never mind. Um, and OBS wouldn't open for me. And I was like, fuck. Uh, and then I Googled around. Uh, there wasn't any like clear, any like clear set of, so I basically just downloaded the newest OBS and restarted my computer and thankfully that worked. But for like a quick second, I was like, oh no, are we not having the stream today? Uh, and then right when I, uh, tried to start streaming. I actually was ready right at 2.30 and then what happened was uh, I clicked start streaming on OBS and I have forgotten that there was that whole uh, Twitch uh, hack 
where all of our keys got reset. So then for like two minutes, I was scrambling, being like, crap, why is the newest key? <laughs> oh man, it's been a bit. Um, oh yeah, I honestly miss using observable and observable plot. Um, it's been, I feel like it's been so long since I've like, I don't get to code. Well, certainly I don't get to do data viz right now. Um, and so it's been a while since I've used plot. I don't think I've used plot since school started. Um, I am very, very excited to like maybe show some of the things I've been working on. Um, I actually, uh, so I'm currently working on a project for one of my classes um, and I had just ordered a bunch of components and they just got in so maybe I could do like, if you're interested in this, maybe we could do an unboxing. Um, yeah, and then <laughs> Monta Ray. <laughs> uh, and then maybe uh, I can show some of the kind of blog posts that I've been writing for school and then I can explain that a little bit but let's see Ooh, Maddie Two Shoes says I want to get a bit deeper with observable plot played around with it a little uh, yeah of course oh exciting start up pre funding <gasps> that is Super, super exciting. Congratulations. Wow. Uh, are you allowed to say what your startup is doing or are you still trying to keep that kind of quiet? Uh, freelancing for three months till December to keep the cash flow going. That sounds great. Uh... <laughs> wait, what? Engineer change. Tweeting one thing a week is better than blogging. Wait, 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 wait. wait I think I'm missing the context of that one. Um... Oh, that's fair engineer change about the imposter syndrome with D3 because you don't know basic JavaScript and really don't know where to start. I actually for, um, that's so interesting. I think because you know R and Python, I feel like you'd be able to catch it. I think you would be able to um, onboard. Let me see. I feel like there's a lot of people that learn D3 without really knowing JavaScript beforehand. One of the big ones I hear a lot is um, uh, Scott Murray has that book that's like Introduction to Interactive Data Visualizations for the Web. I think that's the title. Um, I've heard of that as like a really good book for um, somebody trying to get into D3 with no web experience. Um, it might it might be a little too handholdy for you because it assumes no coding knowledge whatsoever. I think it's more geared towards like designers and um, yeah, I think a lot of designers. Uh, so then it will kind of explain everything. Which I think is really good, but then like you could just skip those parts where they're explaining where he's explaining things that you already know. Um, I also have the front end masters workshop um, with the intro to D three, where I think I assume very little JavaScript knowledge, or I assume coding knowledge. So I assume that you would know um, data structures and stuff. Um, and maybe that will be helpful, but yeah, I, I don't think you should feel imposter syndrome at all. I think it's just D3 does have a little bit of a different way of thinking than a lot of other JavaScript libraries, but because you're not doing JavaScript, like you're not a JavaScript web developer, I don't think that would be a problem either. If you want to tell us more about like where you got stuck, maybe we can like figure that out together. Um, Monterey. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me unbox the electronics and then we'll share a screen and we'll look at uh, Hello Near. This is uh, 
30 day map challenge and then maybe I can show some of the documentation. And then actually one of the things that uh, I wanted to um, talk about is uh, I've been, well, uh, I've been trying to <laughs> start a Patreon um, for like a long time. Um, and I think I finally have the tiers figured out. Uh, and for anyone that used to subscribe to me on Twitch, thank you so much for doing that. Um, because I no longer uh, stream as often on Twitch, um, I don't think it makes as much sense to do the subscriptions here. But um, I think one of the things that have been really fun uh, and exhausting, but fun is that uh, for school, um, we have to document every single project we could do, every single lab and assignment. Um, and so I thought maybe um, if there is any interest that I would start a Patreon where I just have like two tiers. Oh my God, Gilliam, <laughs> welcome back in. Oh man, thank you so much for 15 months. Right on cue, Gilliam, yes. Um, oh my god, I have a bay. Thank you so much. Uh, wow, okay, hello, welcome in. Uh, Twitch now kindly says that you're a first time chat. Uh, first time chat from viewer, that's what it says. Uh, I am so happy that you dropped in to say hi. Um, and thank you so much for reading our book. Uh, if you I would love to hear what your thoughts are. Um, actually, before I keep talking about, uh, before I continue talking about the Patreon, I think maybe the order of events could be I unbox the electronics, um, and then uh, and then we can look at uh, how near this is map then we can take a little bit of look at some of the things that I've documented because I'm kind of excited and proud of them. And then I will love your help in naming my Patreon tiers. <laughs> I swear, like, that's the biggest thing that's been holding me up where I just don't know what to name the tiers. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> uh, So, uh, wait, hold on. Okay, one thing at a time. Ooh, let me also catch up on the chat a little bit. Um, Maddie Tushu says, yeah, it's not in stealth at all. An online marketplace for home-cooked food. Oh my god, that sounds amazing. Wait, it's in German though. Um, cook, eat. Is it like... Um, is it kind of like a, a meal prep service where like you send people uh, the raw ingredients for a meal and then they uh, cook it at home? Or is that kind of the, the business uh, model, Maddie Two Shoes? Um, Engineer Change says, tweeting one thing a week is referring to the 30-day map challenge being an easier task-based thing than, say, writing full-out blog posts. Oh, got it. Yeah, the blog posts are honestly what's killing me. <laughs> like, we literally have to generate a blog post per class per week. I am dying. Um... Yeah, I definitely agree with Maddie Two Shoes that um, with any programming knowledge, you can definitely, definitely learn D3. Um, oh, wait, I just realized Iva Vey said I'm reading that book right now, not your book. I just realized I totally misread that. Um, Ballerberg, hello, welcome in. Uh, I do not stream anywhere else, I only stream here on Twitch. I honestly don't know how to stream anywhere else. Yeah, if there's like a better platform for streaming, let me know. <laughs> um. <laughs> Can only allow punny to your names, yes. Yeah, actually, 
I would love suggestions for punny names. Um, I will take those punny names. Inside jokes, maybe? Um, oh, my streams do go on YouTube as archives, but I don't stream anywhere else. Um, Oh, thank you so much. I'm a very, I'm so, I was like embarrassed, like embarrassed for a second. I was like, oh, I like totally just <laughs> projected. And I was like, assumed that you were reading our book. Um, but so happy to hear that. Thank you. Uh, Maddie says, peer to peer, totally prepared meals. For example, I'm making lasagna next Wednesday, and then you buy a couple portions as I'm making some anyway. That is so interesting. And then, and then, does your platform take care of the delivery, or like how does that work? Is it like, is it, I guess, like if you're starting in a city, then like a pretty densely populated area, then you can probably make that work pretty, pretty seamlessly, right? Or is it like by neighborhood, like, um that you're only sharing with your neighbors is that how that works or okay let's get the electronics it is under my desk Ugh. okay all right i will show this side that does not have my address and then ugh. okay i'm gonna be really really careful about unboxing this without showing our address even once. Let's let's figure this out. Okay, so the project that these components are for, I honestly didn't expect it to come in like this big of a box. Uh, husband picked it up like an hour ago. Um, They're always in boxes about that size. Are they digi key? Yeah, they're usually not gonna be smaller than that. I thought it would just come in like a package. Like like a like a letter like letter envelope or something because mm. I didn't I didn't too, too much risk that the parts get squished or mishandled so they usually put a lot of air in there oh. so it's like usually box and box oh got it that makes sense is this the first time that husband spoke on stream <laughs> he's been like trying to <laughs> he like doesn't uh, we have this agreement that he doesn't show his face or anything for like just his comfort. Um, and I know that you just you just joined the sh the, the chats uh, because I thought you just you wanted to I thought you wanted to keep your like voice private too, but <laughs> yeah. Um, wait, what did I miss? Uh, figure out a line. The cook can choose how it's offered. Definitely aimed at neighborhoods. 10 minutes walk from you, but the cook can stay at the table, take away or delivery. Oh, we just pay them for it, but we will see what works best. That is so interesting. The local takeaway table options have worked best, especially within people's apartment buildings. That is, I love that idea, Maddie Tissues. I hope it really takes off. Um, I like kind of the kind of like that the giving and sharing economy. Like, is that what is that what it's called? Like a gift economy? I don't know if I'm using that correctly, um, but I love the idea of like, um, especially like when I was single. Um, wait, let me not pretend like as if I like ever cooked that much. <laughs> but uh, when I was uh, before we started dating, uh, I used I did used to cook for myself once in a while but the reason why i hated cooking was because it's just really sad cooking for one person and it's like so much effort but then like but if you only cook for like one like one person's portion it's like so much effort but like then but then like your payout is like so little and then if you cook a lot then you're just eating leftovers for days, which I, I never quite liked eating leftovers for days. Um, so this sounds like such a fun, um, it just sounds really fun that like, I think cooking for others is so fun. And then like you get to meet your neighbors and stuff. Um, so yeah, I hope it really works out. Um, A very background present. 
Oh, sharing economy. Yeah, <laughs> technically the meal doesn't exist anymore after you ate it, yes. Yeah, cooking for one is awful. But if you cook four portions and sell three of them, you make three neighbors happy. Oh, yes, you're right. You can, you're making money off of that too. Ooh. Ooh, that sounds like a really good idea. I really hope it takes off, Maddie. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Astro penguin. Astro penguin? Astro penguin? <laughs> Welcome in. Hello. Um. Oh, that's really smart. Uh, Shu Penguin says, I like to meal prep to avoid having to do it every day. Um. <laughs> oh no! Yes, I hope you don't have to hunt for a job again in seven to eight months. Okay, so the uh, project that this is for is um, I wanted to make a physical device um, where... Uh, I could keep track of my how many times we ate out or ate in in a week um, and so this project is for uh, our class called physical computation and so we learn our Arduinos and all of that um, and then the project needs to be able to do serial communication with our laptop so uh, I'm writing the Arduino code so that um, the device can like just uh, read inputs, um, like just button inputs. And then uh, where I say for each day, I can say whether I've eaten uh, in or out for lunch, dinner, or other, other being like, you know, went out for drinks or had boba or whatever. And then that data uh, gets, um, and then I wrote a server that can take that data and then just like write it into a file. Uh, it's like a two or three week project, so not anything too overly ambitious. But I did want to make the device nice, so I got all of these components. Actually, I just realized maybe I should show you like my really rough sketch of what I want the device to look like and then show you the components. So. Let me do that first. Let's see. Okay, so we will go to this uh, view that we haven't in a while. Let's do this. Bam, we're in the code view again. It's been a while, except we no longer code. <laughs> Um, okay, wait, and then I was going to show you. See, these are all of my documentations. There's so many of them. Not all of them are finished. Most of them are finished, but not all of them are. Um, I'll talk more about this later, but for project two, uh, this is what uh, I want it to roughly look like. So it's like this device, maybe this big, I'm not sure yet. Um, and then it just has Monday through Sunday, and I just keep track of uh, lunch, dinner, and other. So those are options. Um, and then whichever day we're on, that's the one that's lit up. And then um, uh, for any of the days when we ate, I haven't decided on this. I think what I'm gonna do is that I light up any day that we ate in. Cause I, I want to reward us eating in. Um, so then any day that we ate in, I will light up. Uh, and then this data gets saved into a file. And then I think eventually I might just like make a really simple um, client side app web page for myself where uh, this device is purely for looking at the current week but then on a web page I can look at all of my past weeks and eventually I think I might tie it into my uh, I'm like starting to build out a really simple web app for just like keeping track of my weekly and monthly expenses um, that I pull from like my various different accounts so that I can just have like a good overview of like my financial health. So I might eventually tie this data into that, but that's like months down the line. Um, 
That is a great question, Engineer Change. Do leftovers from eating out count as eating in? And I think, ooh, that is a really good question. Because then I guess it's like, uh, what what am I trying to keep track of? Is it like financial, like we're saving money by not eating out, or is it like health, like we're eating in, so we're eating better? I think for this particular one, uh, the goal is more financial. So then I think leftovers from eating out would count as eating in. <laughs> Uh, yes, Gilliam, it's been a lot of writing. Oh my god. Um, William Schneider, welcome back in. Hello, it has been a while. Um, thank you so much. Also happy to cat that you caught us live today. Um, yeah, 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 this project is, uh, data entry. Indeed, data entry, server-side data storage, and front-end presentation. Front-end pre presentation will probably be further down the line. Um, and although I might put together something really, really simple just for this project, uh, our final project, we need to work with motors. And husband uh, suggested... <laughs> I was so annoyed with him when he like suggested this because he suggested this like two weeks in uh, where like into this project where I already had like a thought on how it was going to look. But he suggested actually, I think this idea is super interesting and I might do it for the final, which is he suggested some like a something like a punch card uh, and then taking that punch card and reading it like a um, and reading it and then uh, generating music, I think, like a music box. Uh, so instead of like, you know, these buttons to light these up, um, to have, to maybe push a button that like, maybe is connected to a murder that like punches, like a little receipt looking thing. And maybe that receipt looking thing is then like read in to, I don't know yet. I don't know yet, but I think that would be fun for a final project. The final project, we're supposed to use motors. Um, costing data will show the reward. Wait, hold on. Helen here, this says costing data will show the reward of eating in. Costing data? Like expenses data? <coughs> oh, thank you so much, Ivan Bay. Uh, mm. Interesting question. Engineer Change asks, will it light up in some way if there hasn't been data entry by a specified time? Uh, so I do have this thought of a way to go back and edit. So like, for example, if, you know, I forgot to enter in things for yesterday, then I can like, I can go back and edit yesterday. I'm not sure if I'll keep that functionality in yet though. Um, is that what you mean, engineer change? Um, wait, send an SMS. <laughs> uh, <laughs> lights are always better than audio, but oh, so much less annoying. Wait, I've lost context on what's annoying or not annoying. Um, oh. William asks, what is the average time you take to finish your projects? Uh, I think the question is, which kind of projects? Do you mean the data viz projects I used to do for clients or uh, like this particular project? So I do always scope my projects so that uh, it could fit into the time frame I have. So some of my projects can like um, take only like a week uh and some of my projects can be like months it could take three or four months um and that really is dependent on the timeline we have so it's less that i um it's it's kind of more the other way around of like i first have to figure out how much time i have and then i scope the project down to fit into that time it's not always a, like a perfect practice sometimes i like just go way over time because i just get scope creep but um, let me actually show the components I got. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to our bigger view so that you can see this. So, let me see. Uh, oh, 
feedback loop for not entering data. No, I think I will only have feedback loop for entering data. Um, yeah, I think like, for example, if we ate out all day, then like we wouldn't, you know, enter the data at all. So then, and that's intentional, right? So then I will only give feedback when we enter data, I think. Whoa, wait, there's stuff in here. I've actually never ordered from <laughs> check packaging materials for product. Got it. Okay, I've never ordered from this vendor before. But I guess it's like one of the big vendors. Um our department orders from here a lot. Is this ASMR? Like I think this one has something. Wait, let me see if I can Oh, there's such limited space on my desktop. Okay. Okay, let me see if I can tilt this down a little bit more. Does that help at all? Nope. Okay. <laughs> I think that's such an interesting... Um, idea though like audio feedback Helen here this says I recall hearing music from floppy drives the motor and drive head movement made sounds of different pitch very mechanical yeah I think that would be really fun I think that'd be so fun to figure out for for the final project I think for final projects we have more time this one we only really had two or three weeks time but Oh my god, so brutal. Two or three weeks where like two of those weeks we still have other labs. Like we still have new material we're learning. Like basically we have this project which is serial communication. But while we're working on this project, we're like learning new <laughs> serial like learning new concepts about serial. So <laughs> it is rough. <laughs> like um at the same time of working on this i still have to like we still have to like do all of the we still have like regular homework <laughs> i have i never had this much homework in undergrad uh i still have not seen any products I think this is just all packaging to make sure that the product is fine. It told me to check all of the packaging. <laughs> I think these are just all... Okay. Oh, here they are! Okay! Whoa. Okay, so, oh no, I forgot to order one thing. I forgot to order the proto board. So for this project, so for last project, um, the first project I did this thing. Oh no, hold on. Ugh. Oh, it's been disassembled so that I can reuse it. But I did this, um, which was this like memory game, Simon Says game. Um, and so we just kept it in this breadboard. I had two other teammates for that project. They were awesome. And then we kept on, we kept it in the breadboard and then we just like laser cut this uh, cardboard container that we put it into and then, um, and then we had like a cover. Uh, this one was really fun. I learned a lot about batteries and working with batteries and calculating for batteries. <laughs> Uh, but this time around, what I want to do is use like a proto board um, where I can solder so that we have like, so that there's much more permanent connections. So this one is for um, soldering to the proto board um, so that I can put the Arduino. So we have, I have an Arduino Nano that I'm going to use. I'm gonna put the Arduino in here. Oh, I just realized, do I have space to store all this? 
Husband is looking at me. <laughs> I, I need to organize my cabinets. Uh, but yeah, so this is like a, it's called a dip socket. I don't know what that stands for. Um, but basically, um, ooh, am I going to be like a makeup YouTuber again? Is that focusing? Uh, so basically, I solder this pin side to the proto board, and then I can stick the uh, Arduino in on this side. So that's the first thing. Um, this is fun. Never thought I would do like an unpacking stream <laughs> or unboxing stream. <laughs> but. Oh, and I have a hard cut off at 350 today. Okay, so we just need to keep that in mind. Um, hmm. Oh, Satsumeka says, there's a few videos floating around of folks programming songs out of floppy drives. Oh, that sounds really cool. Yeah, I think it'd be fun to do something like musical, but from like a mechanical perspective. Like I was thinking maybe I wanted to do something with like speakers, but then um, I really like this idea of it makes sound because I like that a lot. It makes sound because of the mechanical instead of because of the instead of a speaker. I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about this more. Um, oh wait, Gilliam says. Uh, wait, my suggestions this time weren't serious. Missed data entry feedback has to be annoying or it won't get done though. Hmm, but see, the problem is that there's a difference between missed data entry and... So like... That's a good point. The missed data entry feedback has to be annoying. Um, our professor gave uh, me a really good feedback which is um, that for these kind of devices we want to wait hold on I have it written down I really liked what he said uh, we have to ah, we have to make uh, to maximize the spontaneity, the spontaneity of entering and commitment to the choice we've made. Um, I thought that was so super interesting from a device design perspective. But I think the thing with this particular one though is that um, if we ate out, then I wouldn't press the button either. So I will only press the button if we ate in. So like right before eating, I might be like, "Itadakimasu," and like enter the button. But I wouldn't enter the button if we ate out. So there's, it's hard to tell. Like there's a conflation between conflation, conflation. Uh, it's from a programming standpoint, it's hard to tell when it's a missed data entry and when it's just a null entry. Um, so yeah, something th something to think through. Um, oh, Maddie, uh, the name of the course is called Physical Computing, um, and it's at NYU's uh, ITP. Yeah, it's in the ITP department. Uh, <laughs> Gilliam says Satsumeka needs a new handle to su suggest stuff incognito. Um. <laughs> That's cute. That is true. Oh my god, I just realized that Satsumeka isn't a moderator. You don't want those powers anyways. <laughs> uh, wait, engineer change, husband is the one that cooks everything. He's a really good cook. Uh, the only reason why we like, 
we can eat in is because he likes cooking and is good at cooking. Um, oh my god, hello Katya, hello, welcome back in, hi, it's so good to see you, how are you doing? Um, oh, wait, Katya, were you taking a data science boot camp? I can't remember. Um, if you were, how has it been going? Ooh, hello near this, thank you. Uh, so, hello near this says that the DIP socket, that DIP stands for dual inline package. Oh, cool, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, back to the electronics. Um, ooh, hello! Accelerator. Oh, accelerator. Hello. Konnichiwa. Uh, Hi. 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 I don't know how to talk about streaming in Japanese. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the uh, missed data entry, it, it's a design choice, yeah. Because I think it's that if we ate out, then I think it's uh, uh, the reason why I chose the hitting the button when we eat in is because if we eat in we'd be right by the device so we can just hit it right away like that could potentially be built into our habit that like right before we say like we can just like hit the button um, oh but yeah but accelerator like yeah, congratulations on graduating. Oh my god, it's been a while too. Working as a marketing analyst at a marketing agency now. That's so exciting. Congratulations. Engineer Change says a uh, no data entry versus a default zero data entry getting completed sounds a bit scary to me. Um true. But I think Yeah, I don't know, because um like, so what you're both saying, so Engineer Change and Gilliam, what you're both saying is that um, there should be some way to indicate that, that like I should still be entering a null. That I should still be entering a null entry. I'll keep that in mind. I don't think I have time to change the design this time around, literally do like in a week and a half. Um, but if I continue with this for the final project, I'll definitely keep that in mind. Let me write that down, actually. Oh, you know, um, I have a classmate, one of my classmates is Japanese. <laughs> no is the wisest choice or a missing row in the database works too. Oh, do you mean, wait, do you mean the device design or do you mean the, um, do you mean, uh, like, do you mean how we deal with it in, the database or how we deal why I don't know why I'm saying we how I deal with it in the database or how I deal with it on the device design I guess that's kind of similar <sighs> well so here's the thing right like yeah the the completing is that if we ate out for everything that day then because, like, if in a day, like, we even ate in once, then I know that all of the others are null. If I don't enter those others, then it's null. But, you know, but for me, I feel like... I'm actually not sure if it's a bad thing... 
Like, I'm not sure if I actually need to keep track of whether it's missing data or or a no value. Because the biggest reason why I might not have entered anything that day is because I was out eating out. So... Wouldn't that almost be the same thing? I don't know. I need to think through this. Eh. System design as a whole. Huge easy green button for eating in. Moving red green, green button that is hard to press for eating out. Wow. <laughs> Moving red button that is hard to press for eating out. I see. But like, I think the whole point is to make it as easy for data collection as possible. So then, if we ate out, then I wouldn't even need to hit any buttons, is the way I was thinking about it. Um, these are three different topics. There's the device that should allow some leeway for data entry, possibly late push of the button. There's the database that should record differently, nulls and zeros missing entry versus voluntary no data entry and there's presentation that can choose to fill the holes yeah so actually to your point about the first one it's that the leeway that i'm gonna give is that i can go back and edit previous dates so one of the things ooh, i wonder if i can find it uh, what is this this is the switch push oh yeah Ooh, these are satisfying oh i am a fan I am a fan. Okay, wait, hold on. There's another one that I was trying to find. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, I got this. I, I kind of am excited for this interaction. So, um, if I want to go back and edit a previous day, then I have this scrubber. Can, I, can you see this? Oops. I don't know how easy that is to see. Do I, is this... Man, I'm so glad I'm not a makeup YouTuber. Okay, this. So then you can like, you can like, okay, let me open this. Oh man, I was on the fence about whether I should implement this feature because I have so little time left. But this scrubber looks so fun. So I'm gonna put this on top of a uh, rotary encoder, which is the, the kind of thing that goes, do I have one? No. My desk is so messy right now. Can you see like the behind? Um, I still, I need to get like a pegboard to, for more storage. Um, but yeah, so uh, I put this on top of like a rotary encoder and then that way what we can do, what I can do is like, I can like scrub back and forth and then, um, and then if I'm like, oh, I want to edit Monday. Today is like Wednesday, but I want to edit Monday. Then like I scrub back to Monday. And then I like enter like lunch, dinner, or other. And then and then it gets stored. Um, and, ooh, hi, Serenify. Welcome back in. It's been so long on your channel this morning to see when your last stream was. <laughs> yes. Yes, uh, I do try to tweet about it on my Twitter. I need a better system. Um, yes! Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, like in one of those like iPod. Yeah, I love this a lot. Sorry the lighting is kind of weird right now. Ooh, can you see? Yeah, do you see the... I love this detail. Wait, oh my god, so hard. I love this detail that you can put your finger into and then rotate it. Um, okay, so then... And then for the uh, different options, the Monday, no, sorry, the, the dinner or, um, so the input buttons, uh, you have no idea. Like I spent hours <laughs> looking at uh, all the different options for push buttons, like literally on DigiKey filtering out for like size and clickiness and, um, I'm just like going through and 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 price um, so this is I ended up on two different options um, and this is one of the options this is the 
Oh god, why is it so hard? Why is this so hard? I can't do this. Uh, so this is one of them. It's like a square push button. And then it has a, oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, wait. I, I don't know if you can see this well. Ooh, ooh, there we go, thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Husband just lowered the blinds. Um, yeah. Oh, God. So it's like uh, got this sort of a side profile. And then the clickiness is so satisfying. Oh, that clickiness. So then every lunch that we in, in, eat in, we are rewarded by this clickiness. Try this clickiness. It's very satisfying. <laughs> this has been approved. <laughs> and then the other button option. Ooh, this is interesting too. Oh no, I don't know which one. So the other option was a circular one. Oh, I don't think, okay, this, ooh, I don't like this as much. Okay, so I kind of liked this shape. So it like almost looks like a top hat, but uh, the clickiness is not as satisfying. I think maybe if this is like in the board, let me put it into the board and then see if it's more satisfying of a clickiness. Like if it's in a more, hold on, hold on, okay. Oh, that is not as satisfying. I am disappointed. I think this was the cheaper of the two. Oh, sad. Okay, I looked at so many data sheets. Oh my god. Just to, just to pick, just to narrow it down to these two. Oh, I am sad. Okay, the other push button is much better. I'm glad that I got both of them though. Just to see. Oh, yes. No, they didn't. Um, I don't think they did. If they did, I didn't find it. I, I like filt filtered by tactile. So that one should have been clicky too, but it wasn't. Um, I just realized this is a very interesting pin shape. I hope you'll. Okay, okay, that will that will stick to be fine. I was like, wait, <laughs> will this pin shape be okay? Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't think either of them provided audio files. This is much more silent. Oh, I also went down such a rabbit hole looking at like mechanical keyboard switches because at one point I was like, maybe. I want this to be like a... No, I still haven't given up on that. I feel like mechanical keyboard switch might be a fun input button too. Yes, shopping is difficult. I agree. Ooh, I think this is the last one. Is this the last one? Let's see. Uh, the socket, the... Knob fluted for rot rotary encoder. Yes, that is. We saw that one. Two push buttons. And then the. Yeah, and then the last one is the. LED. So I also got the. I hope this is the one. I hope I ordered this correctly. I couldn't quite tell from the photos. These should be the NeoPixel strips from Adafruit. So these will let me um, program what color I want the NeoPixel to be. Or what, so it's addressable LEDs and I can uh, control RGBW. So this will let me control like, yeah, okay, okay. So, I feel like, I'm not sure if I bought the right kind. 
So this is what it looks like. So this is what it looks like on the inside. And so the nice thing about this is that I can have a really long chain of LEDs without having to like individually um, wire them to the Arduino input. I can just have like use one Arduino pin and then be able to program all of these. So this is what I'll use for the lights. So I'll cut, I think there's, Interesting. So I will cut them into like four strips of seven. Yeah, so I'll like cut this and then have four strips of this and then wire that into the Arduino. Man, I suddenly feel like I have a lot to do still. This is due next Wednesday. Oh no. I have to like solder. Okay, I have to finish coding. I have to design the circuit or finish designing the circuit. I have to solder that. I have to laser cut. So I'm thinking of putting it into a like a bamboo box with like a um, and the top. I'll have it be white acrylic that I'm. Um, will that I'll like laser cut with like all of the icons and all of the words and stuff um need to do that and then I was thinking of using the CNC router to kind of make the housing for inside the box so that all of these components will stay in place Yeah, I hope I can get it all done. <laughs> At least this is nice. <laughs> um, yes, indeed, addressable LEDs. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, Gilliam has an eight key sample keyboard for the sound and feeling. Spent way too much time trying them all. Yeah. Are there, phys are there existing projects from previous classes that have a physical component to them? Wait, uh, sort of like the internet coffee camera but have a clicky component are still on campus from years past? Do you mean like other people's uh, projects? There's, there's a lot of projects with clicky components at ITP. Um, yes, addressable LEDs indeed. Um, ooh, okay. We actually only have 10 minutes together. Oh no. Okay, I got too excited about these um so let's take a look together at um this is how long you this this is a 30 um day map challenge i don't know if you could tell us a little bit more about it so it says combine river gps positions data to a geotiff of elevations that's really cool is this this is Taranaki Rivers with Elevation. Oh, that's super cool. Is that a place in New Zealand? Hello, near this? Um, use mouse to move rivers around. Control, left click, right click to drag model. Wheel to zoom in and out. Oh, this is cool. Why, um... Wait, so these parts... So all of this that we see are rivers. So this means that there's like a lot of, there's that one big mountain and then a lot of little terrains that the rivers are. And then are they flowing out to the sea or how does that work? And I can move rivers around? Control plus left click. Wait. West coast of the North Island. That's cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Engineer change. Uh, yes. Um, there's actually a lot of past projects uh, displayed on the floor. It's really cool. Um, yeah. It's really cool to look at them. And they sometimes rotate it out. So, oh, do you mean like move the whole model around? Is that what that means, Hello on your list? Like not that I can physically move the river lines. 
This is fun. Wait, let's see how you did it. So, so river lines. Oh. Oh man, maps data always just intimidates me like no other. So vector three children. Ah, so these are each of the lines. Oh man. Okay, so this is how you're getting the uh, river positions. It says make a 3D object of all the rivers. Wait, so this one, this first one is river lines, and this one says river lines sec. So this one has seen. Oh, so this is. Mm, is this you putting the river lines into 3GS? And then elevation. And somewhere you're putting the elevation information in too. Oh man. This is really cool. Thank you for sharing, Hello Near List. Ah, two different ways of rendering the lines. Got it. Okay. We got nine minutes. <laughs> um, where I want to get your feedback uh, on what I should name my Patreon tiers. Actually, get your feedback both on the Patreon tiers I've been thinking about and also what I should name them. Uh, if there is punny ones, I would, would super appreciate it. Um, but actually, let me show you. Um, this was my first project. So this is what I just showed earlier, but things were disassembled. So um, I was pretty proud of us that uh, after, I think this was like after three, four weeks of classes, we built this. Um, yeah. So uh, this is, uh, so basically if you get the pattern right, uh, everything lights up. If you don't get the pattern right, then uh, you lose a life. Um, but this is uh, where I realized that I wanted more like stronger, more solid connections between the components and the, the board because I don't know if you noticed, but um, in the second time around, I'm actually inputting the right pattern, but I think because the connection isn't, like the connection was a little bit wobbly between that button and the breadboard, it actually thought that I had input the wrong pattern. So yeah. Yeah, and this is one of the write-ups. So what I was thinking is um, just two tiers for now. Um, I haven't looked into if I can, I, I think I'm allowed to add tiers, more tiers later. Am I allowed to delete a tier for now? Unpublish? Oh, delete. I can delete this. Yeah, I'll delete that one for now. Uh, I'm only thinking about these two tiers for now. So the $5 tier for um, updates, update messages, uh, behind the scenes, photos and videos uh, of these projects, and then the $10 for early access to all of the documentation. And then at the end of the semester, so I think big projects, I'll publish um, publicly uh, when, like maybe a few weeks after I finish the project, but then, um, but then on Patreon, I'll like publish like as I'm working on the project, I'll publish those updates. And then for all other non-project documentation, I'll release it all in one go publicly uh, at the end of the semester. But for Patreon, um, I'll put it on Patreon like as soon as I finish each one of them. Um, so yeah, those are the two tiers I'm thinking about. Uh, I would love your feedback about whether they sound appealing <laughs> uh, or reasonable or 
yeah, and what I should call each of them. Um, I don't know. <laughs> well, so these are actually these tiers are what Patreon suggests. Um, I don't know what the voting power would be for. <laughs> uh, so I should edit this tier to say no to this and then add benefit of, I guess, this full library access. Um, I'm just still trying to figure out this Patreon. Oh, custom benefit. Um, add free content, add free episodes. Hmm. Oh, yeah, behind the scenes content. So actually, I should put that into the other one. Um, I don't think that, oh yeah. So this one, I think I'll add the behind the scenes. Ooh, there's so many. So I just work in progress updates. Yes, yes, this is what I would like to provide. Very interesting. Okay, yeah, I think this is behind the scenes content. Add benefit. What should the title be? Um, ooh, okay, hold on. Hello, near this says uh, to add another notebook to add the GeoTIFF elevation data to the shape file. Needs debounce hardware software on the Simon game. Um, I don't think it was actually, yeah, I need to think about it more. I'm not sure if it was a debounce problem. Um, well, so I don't think it was a de debounce problem because what the code does is it basically says, um, only trigger an event if the uh, state of the button has changed. So if I keep pressing down, on the uh, button, um, then I wouldn't trigger any new events. So that's kind of like a debounce because what Arduino does is it samples the input button at like 96 hundredth per second or something. Um, or sorry, 96 hundred times per second, yes, yeah. Um, and so every single one of those times, if I'm holding the button down, um, Arduino will keep getting a on reading, um, but I don't do anything unless that reading changes from on to off or off to on. So I don't think it's a debounce problem. I think it really is that while I'm holding it down, it probably is that the wiring, like, the wiring connection isn't that strong. So then as I'm holding it down, down it probably thought that uh, it probably, or the Arduino probably read it as off and on like really quickly. And then, so then that triggered an event that then there was like an extra input to my pattern, like an extra unintended input to my pattern that made the pattern, then, then my code thought that the pattern was incorrect. Um, yeah. Uh, so for Discord for Patreon, I was thinking of not having it for now. Um, and then maybe after a few months putting it in then. Um, I think this is very much like a experimentation of, I think the biggest reason why I've been wanting to do Patreon for a while is because um, it's been kind of hard to put things on Twitter because I just don't know who's looking at my Twitter or like anybody can read my Twitter. Um, and so this is kind of like a space where I just want to like put update messages and stuff without worrying about like any trolls reading things or anything. 
Um, I think that might be the biggest thing. Like, that's kind of the biggest thing that I want to experiment with is like having a place where I can share my thoughts, but with people that I know don't have any ill intentions. Um, share kind of like behind the scenes things. Um, also, I'm now in school and I don't have any time to take on client projects. So uh, that would be also very helpful. <laughs> um, yeah, not worry about the tier name. So I'm just gonna say like, behind the scenes, I'll put that in for now. Save tier. And then, oh, here, I'll say it. A behind the scenes peak. And then this one is that early access peak. Early access to everything. I'll put that as the tier title. Yeah, and then um, I'll, I'm gonna fill in, I'll like look at the perks more. Um, I'll put in like a description. Um, I want to kind of like explain why I'm doing this. Um, and then hopefully sometime this month I can release it. Um, and then I can release it with like a bunch of um, the things that I've been working on. Some of the things I've been excited about uh, mostly, I've been really excited about the physical computation things. Um, hyper cinema has been really fun. Ooh, we did a stop motion in hyper cinema. Um, so this is what it looks like now. Yeah, I'll uh, have some of these, I think, as sample pages that you can take a look at. And then um, everything else will be for Patreons. Um, yeah, thanks so much for joining the update today. Uh, it was super good catching up. Um, I'll probably have a stream at the same time on the first Monday of December. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'm not dying from finals and hopefully I'll have fun project updates then too um so thank you so much uh everyone that came in to say hi that stayed around to chat thank you so much for always tuning in even though i don't do this regularly anymore i really really appreciate our conversations and your feedback um and i am sad that uh, i don't have the time to do this like every single week anymore uh, but I do appreciate being able to check in and someday someday I swear I will make those videos those YouTube videos because I have some projects uh, I have my last data viz projects like client projects I did before I started school um, I still want to do like a kind of like a process video on those so um, hopefully we'll get to that um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, is there uh, anybody we should go and raid? Let me see. Let's see who's on right now that we can raid. Ooh, a random Tim. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, stick around if you are down for a raid. Um, as I try and figure out who, I would love any suggestions for someone to rate. Oh no, uh, there's nobody on right now that I follow. Um, in that case, no raid for today, uh, but I will see you hopefully in a month. Bye-bye.